Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. So today we're actually gonna be working on a set of uh, rear trailing arms for this car. I know I already have a set of rear disc brakes on here that are from a DA Integra, but the reason why I'm changing them is that the DA Integra ones are actually a little bit wider than the normal uh, DC Integras or the Civics or any of that. So today we're gonna be changing them to a set of DC Integra trailing arms, which I got from my friend Andrew, who is also a viewer of the channel. So thanks Andrew for the trailing arms. Um, so let's just get to it and I'll show you guys what the difference actually is. All right guys, so here are the DC um, trailing arms. This one actually was missing two of the Torx bolts, the T50 uh, bolts for holding the spindle down in the back. So I found a couple of bolts that actually fit and I just tightened them on with some blue Loctite. Uh, I, I, there's no torque specs on it, so I kind of went a little overboard and tightened it to about 70 foot pounds. I think that's a little bit too much, but you know, these aren't meant to be taken off anyways. I wanted to take them off to repaint them, but it was a pain in the ass to try and get them off because, you know, after years and years of corrosion, you know, that's, that's probably locked on there good, right? So let's just quickly measure out what the um, track width difference is. So we'll measure it right now. And then when I get the DA arms out, we'll measure that one as well. And then you can see the difference. So we're also going to be replacing this trailing arm bushing as well. I have some energy suspension ones that we're going to be using um, and we're going to be swapping those out. So I'll show you guys the process of that uh, with a makeshift tool that I did. All right, so where you want to measure is basically from this lot to the starting point here. Yeah, I know it's a little bit rusty, but you know, if this is what it is, it'll correct the track width difference. So here you see it's about two inches right away to where the spindle is connecting to the arm. So this is going to be the same measurement where we're going to do on the DA arms. So just kind of remember that the DA ones are probably going to be about 2.5. So this is two inches. All right, first things first is to take note of where this kind of sits right now because it doesn't look like it sits evenly. And also the slotted end is on this side. So make sure that you kind of have that going. Um, I'll measure from the ring to here just to determine how far it is. And that's about a little bit under two inches. Um, so that's where it's supposed to sit. Um, so write that down somewhere so that you don't forget. Um, now, basically how we're gonna be removing this is we're gonna to have to drill into this bushing. You can already see all the cracks in here. So we're gonna drill into the bushing so that we get the pin up. After that, we're gonna whack this out. So let's just get to it. Next, we're going to whack this out. So we're going to do these one at a time. I'm going to take these outside. I'm going to heat them up and burn them. So you want to get the metal parts hot enough where the rubber disengages from the metal. Now it's time to whack the rings back in. The trailing arms are tapered, so it only goes in so far, but whack the rings as far as possible. It should sit quite flush with the trailing arms. All right, so these are whacked in. Um, since I whacked them pretty hard, there's a little lip in here. Uh, I'm gonna get a Dremel and just kind of grind it down a little bit so that it is not sticking out. It might damage the bushing. So that's what I'm gonna do for both sides. They are in now. Um, so this ring basically has to sit flush uh, against here. And that's basically it. It only goes in so far, so you can keep whacking it, but it'll get stuck. This is basically as far as it goes. All right, so here's the setup process to press the bushing in. I use a threaded rod, two nuts, and a bunch of large washers, at least the largest I could find at a hardware store, as well as I cut a piece of two by four and drill the hole in it for the threaded rod. 
Uh, I used the 2x4 as a washer because I couldn't find a washer large enough to safely press the bushing in. Then I used a couple of pieces of 2x4 to space the back out so that the bushing could press right in. Now use an impact gun and the bushing will press right in, quick and easy. Alright guys, so you notice I have my bushings all pressed in. Uh, here's the back side, just to... These things do move in and out, so you know it, it doesn't really impact anything if you don't have it perfectly lined up. It'll line itself out when you put it in the car. Uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to use these arms onto the car. The reason being is um, the e-brake cables on this car are seized up onto the DA bracket. Um, so the bracket that holds the cable onto the caliper is held on by two bolts uh, and it's basically looped in there with a clip and it's kind of seized on there. I can't get it off. I've tried, spent a lot of time on it. I'm not going to go through the trouble of trying to take it off. So basically this video is on how to install a trailing arm bushing um, on some DA arms or on any Honda arms. So if you guys are considering, um, you know, getting some uh, disc brakes, get the DC ones um, or any of the other Civic ones. Do not get the DA arms because that one has the half inch um, track width difference. But anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please comment, like, and subscribe and share my videos. As always, guys, I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.